in Colorado Springs. It's another brighter day in the neighborhood. I'm your host, Angela Jones. And today with us, we have Shelly Brunswick. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to be joining you this morning. I know. I'm, I'm really excited, too. Um, it's been a, a little um, tricky to get you in here with your world travels and whatnot. So I'm glad we were able to finally catch up with you. Well, 2021 was a fantastic year for space, but also for getting out there and talking about what's going on in the space industry. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me, and I'm glad that we finally connected and looking forward to a fantastic 2022 with you. Oh, thanks. So let's go ahead and um, uh, explain to um, our listeners what your tie-in with space is. Well, fantastic. Well, I actually started my career in the military. So I was in the military for almost 30 years, and I did space acquisition towards mm -hmm. the end of it. So I am a space professional. However, when I transitioned out of the military, I moved here to Colorado Springs, which is actually moving back to Colorado Springs, and started as the chief operating officer at Space Foundation. And as of this month, I'm now there seven years, and it's gone in a blink. Oh, wow. So explain to me that whole, you know, you went in the military from Colorado Springs. You're a Colorado Springs native. I am not. I oh, wish okay. I were. Okay. But I did enlist in the U.S. Air Force uh, right out of high school. And so my goal was I just want to see the world and get some college yeah. money. And every time the opportunity came to separate and go to college, I was like, oh, man, I really love what I'm doing. I want to stay. So I kept re-enlisting. But during this whole time, I was going to school at night. So pretty soon I had my bachelor's degree done. Right. And at that point, I was stationed here in Colorado Springs at the gotcha. Air Force Academy as an enlisted personnel specialist. And so I applied to be an officer while serving my country. And yeah. the first time I applied, I was not selected. Wow. So, <laughs> and that was for like the OCS program, yes. like a green to gold type of thing? Yes, okay. green to gold, that's what okay. we call okay. it. And um, so, but what I tell your audience is, never give up. Keep pursuing your dreams. I applied a second time, and on that application, I was selected to be a space acquisition officer, and that's what started my space career. Nice. So tell me, what is a space acquisition officer? So it, it sounds Are you acquiring fancy. space? Or? Yes, I'm acquiring <laughs> space, and space is all around us. Right. Uh, one of the oxymorons we say is space is small because it's a small community of people. But right, right. But what a space acquisition officer is, is it's like a space project manager. And so my mm. job was to work in the looking at procuring launch vehicles or satellites or ground stations and doing that acquisition process with uh, consultants and contractors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that to develop the programs. So today we've outsourced a lot of that through, right. and you're now seeing SpaceX, United Launch Alliance doing those activities. So yeah, and we'll, we'll dial, I'm going to delve into SpaceX. Uh, believe it or not, that's one of my little. I, I've gotten and I've taken a particular interest in um, Elon Musk lately. Not just you know, um, not just what he is doing um, from a entrepreneurial standpoint, but just his entire history. I read um, his mother's biography um, and her unique history, and you know, you know, I really wanted to know like what type of woman would raise you know a, a, an individual who would go on to do the kinds of things that he did i was interested as a mom more so than anything else but i want to come back around to that but um so we were sort of talking about like coming back to colorado springs where are you from originally like before you got into the military pipeline out of high school so i was born in florida at oh. homestead air force base okay and then i grew up the majority of my teenage years in Wisconsin, so Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Oh, nice. Shout out to the family. Hi, my aunts and uncles. <laughs> and then I enlisted right in the Air Force uh, right out of high school, and I have like three chapters to my journey. And so that right. first chapter I shared with you was that enlisted time where I wanted to see the world. And back in the 80s, you know, people mm. think, oh, I'm just going to get on a plane and fly to Paris this weekend. Right. But in the 80s, it wasn't yeah. like that. It was like you had to still write letters. There was no email, and if it, you called, it was expensive. So I was passionate about seeing the world. So I was stationed in Turkey and mm, Germany mm -hmm. and then at the Air Force Academy. And then that's when I transitioned into becoming an officer. And that starts the second right. chapter of my journey. Right. So um, you were born at Homestead Air Force Base. So that means you came from a military family. You're a military brat then? I am not. So okay. my dad was in the Air Force, but... My parents uh, separated when I was mm. young, and so I always like to say my mom, you know, was a single parent before everybody was like, oh, they're single parents. Mm -hmm. So 
there was a little stigma with that. And mm. my mom also went to work in a non-traditional field for women. She worked in manufacturing. She worked mm. on the manufacturing floor making tires and then took advantage of every opportunity that came along and was promoted eventually to upper management. So she was a great role model for mm -hmm. me that demonstrated that there are no barriers. There's no, when people say, oh, you can't do that or that's not for you, just put the hand up and <laughs> Heisman them and just keep moving forward. Right, absolutely. You know, it's interesting, um, and I think we're we're both uh, dating ourselves somewhat yeah. by, you know, talking about, like, it wasn't traditional for, you know, mothers to work, you know, in a tire uh, industry, in the tire industry or what have you. And I think um, even, in, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that space is not a traditionally um, female um profession, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, there's more and more women getting involved in space, but, um, and even in the legal field, I think now, um, it's about 50, 50, but, um, when I was licensed to go to law school, um, I think we were about, um, a quarter to a third of my law school class. And it was kind of coming into that in, in the late nineties coming or mid to late nineties coming into women more and more getting into, the legal field. Um, but I wonder with you saying your mom was, you know, you know, in a single mom, but also in this, you know, kind of manufacturing um, space, did you find yourself being, and, and this is what's going to date me, um, a latchkey kid? So I'm very familiar with the term. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> yes, my mom worked during the day and yeah. I went to school and I was very active in after school activities, sports, yeah. theater. Mm -hmm. I, I consider myself a joiner, so I joined a lot of things, and I'm still a joiner today. I join organizations. Right. Um, so yes, I entertain myself, and I am an only child, so mm -hmm. I love people. I'm a big extrovert, mm -hmm. but I also am very happy just to be by myself. So it, it taught me how to be self-sufficient and mm -hmm. be alone as well as be with others. Well, and I think that's interesting because, you know, um, of the people I've met, period, um, you have a very engaged presence about you. Like you really, um, you know, come into a room and then make connections very quickly, and you seem very intentional about having done that. And so that's interesting. Do you think that comes, you know, goes all the way back to having been, you know, in that position of being what I'm just going to go ahead and say an extrovert that spent a lot of time alone as a kid? I think part of it is that, and mm -hmm. then you always enjoyed that connection. But the other part is one of the last jobs I had in the Air mm -hmm. Force. I worked on Capitol Hill for five years, okay. and my job was to secure the budget for the Air Force. And that's all about building and maintaining relationships right. and working with people and collaborating and communicating. Mm. And again, as I look back over my career, I still have friends from high school. Hi, Jackie. And her mom, and I've maintained all those relationships. Some people don't do that, but I still mail Christmas cards, snail mail, but I also send text messages. You gotta, you gotta stay hip. Sure, but sure. Um, I think I just am a person that believes that relationships are valuable. Mm. And sometimes networking and relationship maintaining can have a negative connotation. But what I share with your audience, it's really about building connections. And those connections can help you throughout your career. I would not be where I am at Space Foundation mm -hmm. had I not shared with people I was transitioning out of the military right. and somebody sent me the job to be at Space Foundation. Right. Well, and I think, you know, if, uh, you know, we can kind of get into that, this, this, this whole thing, like we were talking right before we came on about, you know, meta and, you know, the whole Facebook thing. And, you know, I guess that started, I don't know that it actually started with MySpace, but that's the one I remember. Um, and the whole push behind that was to provide a platform to people for people to be more connected. And I think, um, you know, one of the up and downsides of, you know, um, the COVID pandemic that, you know, we're hopefully coming out on the back end of is, you know, it caused us, you know, to do this, you know, this quote unquote social distancing. And it has afforded for us to be more socially connected through virtual means. Like, I think there are a lot of, you know, grandparents that actually get to see their grandchildren more often or, you know, in engage in that way because it forced us to adapt. Um, and so, you know, just from your perspective, when it comes to things like, you know, that quote unquote networking, like through LinkedIn or what have you, or versus in person, you know, what are your observations about that? Like, which ones are more effective or less effective? And, you know, in, in your 
experience. I completely agree. But there is something about just going out and having coffee with someone. You know, and I'm a huge coffee fan. I, you know, always love that. But you know what I've discovered recently that I cannot help but continue to share with everybody I meet? It's this lemon, uh, like iced lemon loaf tazo tea. Have you ever tried that? I have not, but I heard it's kind of layered. <laughs> like the flavors are yes. layered. So people are talking about this. It's not, it's not just me. I'm a big fan of tea. Actually, I'm not a coffee drinker, so whenever I meet you for coffee, I'm going to have tea, and I'm going to try that lemon loaf next. So what is your favorite? What's your kind of go-to as far as teas go? I found this chocolate tea, Mm. and so it's kind of that decadent chocolate, but yet no calories. Oh, wow. So is that like, is it a bag, like, or do you get it at a, like, Dutch or something like that? I It's in a bag, and I buy it on Amazon. Oh, So nice. I make it every morning, and it's just delicious. Now, I know earlier you said you had been stationed in Turkey. Mm-hmm. Tea is a huge part of that culture in a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, places, you know, around the world. Is that where you picked up your love for tea? So they call it chai, and before mm-hmm. you do any kind of business or socializing, you always sit down and have a cup of chai with lots of sugar cubes. So mm-hmm. you're definitely hyper by the by the end of having that conversation, but it was a wonderful thing to experience that. I carried that with me when I went to Capitol Hill where you would say, hey, let's meet for coffee, let's meet for tea. And you get people out and you actually socialize and get to build a relationship with them as opposed to a business transaction. Right, and I think, you know, I, I don't know, but I think at the end of the day, um, when we're, you know, just kind of re- in that relaxed environment and just chit-chatting, that's when the bonds really form. I think we were, um, you know, we do a lot, I do a lot of business study and whatnot um, to benefit my firm. And that's one of the things um, I, I, I can't, I think it's in Radical Candor that I've been reading, but, um, and it may not be, but um, this idea that um, it's around the water cooler that we used to really you know, meld as a team. And at this juncture, there's no water cooler because we're virtual. And so we have to build in to our day times to just be relational. We do it by like sort of a stand up um, each morning um, at the firm. And it takes about 15 minutes for everybody in the firm to kind of check in and, and just kind of, you know, let everybody know what's going on with them and really uh, pay attention and be present um, for what's going on with everybody else. So I've really enjoyed that. But tell me more about your travels. I'm interested to know if you've ever gone to Malaysia and had tea. I have gone to Malaysia mm-hmm. on vacation with my husband. We oh, have nice. not had tea, but it was fantastic, you know, mm. climbing up the temples. Mm-hmm. We really enjoyed it. So my husband and I actually met on a tour to Thailand. We were Ooh. separate tourists on the trip, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we met on the trip to Thailand. And you should always meet your future spouse on something you're passionate about and enjoy a hobby and we've traveled together ever since wow well i met my husband in a country music bar which is not one of my passions but it does embarrass the snot out of my mother-in-law when you know people ask our story and i tell folks that we met in a bar called the red roper so i got a lot of mileage out of that over the last i love it and i love country music so i think that's fantastic (laughs) hopefully you like country music i do like country music but it was sort of one of those boot scoot and boogie bars you know like where everybody wears the ropers and Mm -hmm. everything and um does the line dancing and the two-step and um you know, neither my husband or I are gifted in, you know, being able to do those types of floor dances, although I've always loved watching. And you just love it when you see a couple that can really get in, you know, um, on the middle of the floor and really dance and like especially swing or what have you. I've always admired people that can do that, but never really actually put the time and effort into being one of those people. I do have one of those great friends Mm -hmm. throughout my journey who Mm -hmm. was first stationed with me at L.A. Air Force Base, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. She was an amazing swing dancer, went to the Brown Derby. Um, So she actually did that. Again, I'm like you. That would require a lot of time and effort, and my passions are somewhere else. Right, right. So I know, and I keep bringing you back to travel, uh, you've told me in the past that travel is one of your passions, and, and you said earlier that that's really was the primary thrust uh, for you joining the Air Force, or at least a big mm-hmm. part of it. Um, so where are your favorite places in this world? I love Africa. Oh. So my husband Which loves... parts? 
pretty much all of it. So okay. I really love Tanzania. I love Ooh. the people. I love wildlife. I'm an avid photographer, so I oh, love wow. taking pictures, capturing the essence of the people, the wildlife, the landscape, the nature, hmm. and then sharing that with others. My husband, he's more the quaint city in Europe. So we have to, you know, make compromises as we go through this. And we yeah. were hoping to go on a safari uh, in December 2021, mm -hmm. but then Omicron happened. And so we've kind of pushed that off. And hopefully this year we'll be able to go back to Africa. It's been about five years. Yeah, the only place we were able to visit in Africa was Morocco. And that's again, that's another tea place um, that was very neat. And a lot of people don't know um, that it's very European, um, you know, and so there's that nice blend of the European with, uh, you know, mm, I would say more of the Islamic mm -hmm. traditions than African or tradition. What we, not that there aren't a lot of um, people who follow Islam in Africa, but I think what we typically tend to think of is more, you know, South Africa or, you know, safari type countries, and it's a very European country. So other than Tanzania, you've been in what countries in Africa? So I have been to Morocco. I've been, I, I should have clarified, I did go to Egypt in um, December for mm. work. So that is part of Africa. Yeah, but absolutely. as you said, it's a different vibe and yeah. feel than right. Tanzania and the we Serengeti. That, yeah, we kind of kind of think of it as like, part of the Middle East. Yes, you know. the MENA region. Exactly. But I will tell you, that was one, um, that was on our bucket list, and it was on one of our itineraries, and I think, and I don't really know what year, but we weren't able to go into um, Egypt because um, Canadians were being kidnapped at one point in time. And we're not Canadian, but, you know, it, I don't think anybody outside of the United States and Canada can really tell the difference. By and large. Exactly. So. Well, we were invited for a wonderful event called the Global Forum for Higher Education and Scientific mm -hmm. Research. And the president of Egypt participated and our chairwoman from Space Foundation, who is a retired astronaut, mm -hmm. uh, actually had the president of Egypt comment about her panel discussion. So mm -hmm. it was a, a great opportunity for Space Foundation. And obviously, one of the things I love was all the young students that were there and mm -hmm. were excited and you know, I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of selfies, so I took yeah. a million selfies uh -huh. with all these young, excited men and women who are excited about space and wanting to meet people who are part of the space industry. So I'm going to tie a loop here because I mentioned a little bit early, I read May Must's biography, and it's called A Woman Has a Plan, and um, it has an Africa-Canada connection, for one. Um, she mm -hmm. and her parents, um, it was, it's, let me put it to you this way. It's not a particularly well-written biography, but it's fascinating. You know what I mean? Like the content is great um, in just her life story. But her parents um, flew, you know, like they met, you know, along the road and her, her father was a pilot. And so they'd fly around Canada. Well, at one point in time, they decide, he just decided he was going to put his plane, not a car, but put his plane on a boat and take their brood of kids that they'd had and move to South Africa or somewhere, I think South Africa, but mm -hmm. somewhere in Africa. They got off the boat and he flew around and he saw these lavender fields and decided that's where they were going to live. And so that's a big part of this background um, of developing, you know, the mother of Elon Musk, who is, you know, founded SpaceX that you're involved with and, you know, the private uh, space program, the, you know, like we, I think we've talked about that right now we have, you know, private female astronauts. So tell mm -hmm. me more about that. Well, 2021 was the first year that we had private astronauts go into space on private launch vehicles. So mm. you saw Virgin Galactic, mm -hmm. uh, Blue Origin, and obviously Elon Musk is really passionate about going to Mars. So his passion is about that next step in getting to Mars and creating a Mars colony. Mm -hmm. He once said he wants to die on Mars, just not on impact. Right, of course. Right? <laughs> so it's a really exciting time mm -hmm. for all citizens. So we are seeing female astronauts, um, multi-ethnicities now becoming astronauts. That's really an exciting part of what I'm passionate about is mm -hmm. that diversity and inclusion. Because we said it. When I joined the Air Force, mm -hmm. women were really not part of the space ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a STEM professional, scientist, technology, right? right. right? I have a business background. You're not so a rocket scientist. I am not a rocket scientist. <laughs> right. And we actually don't have any of those at Space Foundation either. Right. So the original path, if you wanted to be in space, you had to be a STEM professional. You were a white male. You were in the military or you were in NASA. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously I was in the military, but I had a business degree and I'm a woman. But as we've progressed over the last 30 plus years, you now see space being open, open and democratized for all of us. So mm. what do I have employed at Space Foundation? Financial managers, marketing, teachers, you know, mm. uh, business professionals, administrative assistants, you know, operational people, media, right? right. And media relations, lawyers, space law. I don't know if you mm. know about this, but we do a lot with space law as well. Who owns the moon? What are we doing with that? What are property mm. rights on the moon? How are we going to go to Mars? Can we pollute on Mars? Should we pollute on Mars? Should we not pollute on Mars? Yeah, what's the jurisdiction? Who has jurisdiction exactly. there at this juncture? So right. we have a lot of fun things mm -hmm. going on at Space Foundation. But what I highlight is all companies are now looking for all skill sets. High mm. school graduate mm -hmm. to Ph.D., business professionals to artists, mm -hmm. media to entrepreneurs. So it's a great opportunity. And when you talk about Elon Musk, what is the thing that's so unique about him is he is an entrepreneur. Right. You know, he, it isn't just SpaceX. It's right. SpaceX, it's Solar City, it's of Tesla. Course. Absolutely. What really is a platform for Mars, right? You have the solar panels, mm -hmm. you have the battery and how it can be charged, mm -hmm. and then you have the vehicle to get you to Mars. So it's one part of potentially an ecosystem mm -hmm. of going to Mars, but I need a whole other ecosystem. I know a woman who's a Mars architect. How are we going to build? What are we going to live wow. in? Um, how are we going to grow food there? So you, there's a person right now who's an architect for infrastructure on Mars. Yes. At in the, She's at SpaceX? No, she, she lives Foundation? in Los Angeles. I'm going to connect you with Vera. It's okay. Vera Mars on okay. Facebook. All right. She's amazing. I met her at Dubai Expo because we were going to talk about uh, the trip I just came back from from Dubai Expo. Right, it was Space right. Week. So I met some amazing right. um diversity of space professionals and so right. she's a mars architect well you know what i think we're getting really close on time so i'm going to ask it we have a few more minutes to talk but i'm going to ask if i could you know um beg borrow steal maybe some more of your time to come back next week and so we can actually get into some of those things would that work for you that would be amazing i would love it and we'll just make sure we have what do you call it lemon loaf tea with yes. us <laughs> and uh we'll tell the audience how that's layered with flavor <laughs> so funny um okay so in the in the last few minutes that we have i want to make sure that people can you know get in touch with you and you know what you're doing at space foundation so wonderful so what i want to share with your audience is the space foundation has been in business almost 40 years here in colorado springs this is our world headquarters so come on by and visit us at our discovery center which is right off garden of the gods on arrows west drive and we're going to have a big party in april on april 3rd called Yuri's Night, and there will be libations that will make adults very happy. So mark that on your calendar and go to our website, spacefoundation.org. All right. Thank you, Shelley. Um, this has been another brighter day in the neighborhood. Join us here um, this uh, coming week and every week at this same time and station, um, KPPF. Until then, enjoy brighter days.